Hello fellow travelers. Today we are going to take you to Heidelberg, a city in the most western part of Germany, not very far from the French border and at the junction of the flat Rhine Valley and the Odenwald. Due to its unique location between the Heiligenberg in the north and the Koningstall in the south, the city offers many beautiful views. This is further enhanced by the River Necker which flows on the north side of the city and offers romantic experiences in one of the most beautiful cities in Germany. The many activities you can do, from relaxed to very active, make this a city that is suitable for a visit of three days, but also for much more. The fact that this medieval city has a huge university gives it a very young character, which is unique for Heidelberg. Enjoy and join us at the 11 best activities in this city and know why so many have lost their heart in Heidelberg. Number 1. If you walk, drive or cycle through the city, you will be amazed by all the impressive villas that Heidelberg has. You can see that the city was a base of the wealthy elite and industrialists of Germany, and that this is still true today. You can see old monumental buildings with the character of a bygone era. Most of the beautiful buildings can be seen around the Altstadt and against the slopes of the surrounding hills. In addition to these old buildings, however, you will also come across exclusive modern villas and apartments that are located at beautiful locations. They often look out over the castle or over the Necker Valley towards the Rhine Valley, and thus witness probably one of the best sunsets in the world every evening. Some of these villas have been renovated. They have been given a function as a school, company office or characteristic hotel. Park Hotel Atlantic is an example of such a converted villa. The hotel is within walking distance of the Heidelberger Castle and opposite the Karl Bosch Museum and can serve as a starting point for one of the many hikes into the Koningstall region. What else do you want? Don't expect the luxury of a five-star hotel from one of the big chains but prepare yourself for a trip back in time. Beautiful gardens, with characteristic seating areas surround the beautiful buildings. Number 2. If you stay in Heidelberg for a few days, you can't miss the many shops. In the newer part of this great city, close to the Theodore Heusbrook, you will find a number of shopping centers with branches of the larger chains and a Galeria Kaufhof. The area is pleasantly busy, and in addition to the shops, there are also several cozy terraces and restaurants. This part of Heidelberg is also easily accessible by public transport from the more remote parts of the city. Shopping in the Altstadt is great. A long street, the Hauptstrasse, runs here from Bismarckplatz to Marktplatz and can rightly be called one of the most attractive pedestrian zones in Europe. In addition to world-famous brands, you will also find countless local boutiques that give the shopping pleasure a very special flair. Number 3 visit a museum these come in many shapes and sizes in heidelberg if you want to learn more about the city and the surrounding area this is an ideal time to spend when the weather is bad if you walk past karlsplatz you will eventually find the volkskunde museum this one has been in existence since 1921 and contains works of art from africa asia and oceania in the Altstadt, you will also find the Kerbfalsisches Museum with modern and ancient art. Also interesting is the old university, which is located at the Universitätsplatz in the heart of the Altstadt. 
A nice, perhaps not obvious one is the Karl Bosch Museum on Wolfsbrunnenweg. This has a collection that is completely devoted to the life and work of the Nobel Prize winner Karl Bosch who lived from 1874 to 1940. Karl Bosch, born in Cologne, was the nephew of Robert Bosch, the founder of the multinational Bosch that we all know today from the tools and household appliances. Karl joined multinational BASF where he and his team developed an effective way to produce fertilizer from ammonia for which very high pressures were required, which led to a completely new technology. Later Karl Bosch became the CEO of BASF, and in 1931 he was awarded the Nobel Prize for his work. The museum is located outside the city in an oasis of tranquility, highly recommended. Number 4. After shopping and visiting the countless museums, you might be ready for a little more action. On the north side of the city, parallel to the river Necker, the philosopher's road meanders through the hills. Depending on the weather and your condition you can walk from Heidelberg through the hills on the south side to the Ziegelhauser Brücke, and from there along the Necker or through the hills towards the Philosophenweg. You can hike this trail in both directions. The reason this trail is so popular will be partly due to its romantic name, but the setting and the truly stunning view from the trail of the city may be the main reason. The name of the path can probably be traced back to the fact that many university professors and philosophers found this a wonderful place to have their conversations and discussions. You can't blame them. During the walk you will be surrounded by peaceful forests, and at other times you will be treated to great views of the city, the Necker and the castle. The vegetation on this south slope sometimes looks Mediterranean and supports the whole experience. From the path there are some abbreviations towards the city, but you can walk all the way up to the new bridge and then explore the Altstadt from there. Number 5. Wherever you are in and around the city, you will notice that this city has a connection with the river Necker. This river rises near Schwenningen at an altitude of 706 meters above sea level, and passes through some well-known towns and villages before flowing into the river Rhine close to Mannheim. At Heidelberg, the river cuts deepest through the mountains, which are over 400 meters high at this point. The Necker lends its charm to the city and provides cooling in the summer. On the north side of the river there are many meadows where you can relax during the warm periods of the year. So take your towel and settle down, or rent a boat to take a short trip on the slow-flowing river and see Heidelberg from the water. Linked to the river and the city is the Alte Brücke. The old bridge connects both sides of the city. The bridge attracts many people. All those people are an attraction in itself. It is teeming with different cultures and the most diverse characters are making music on the bridge, taking a selfie, or drinking a glass of wine sitting on the edge. Others are just strolling between the beginning and the end of the bridge, over and over again. From the bridge you look out over the old city gate, 
the churches and of course the castle, but that is not surprising, as you can see the castle from almost anywhere in the city. On the bridge you will find a statue of the elector who ordered the bridge's construction, and a statue of the Roman goddess Minerva. Next to the city gate is the famous statue of the monkey of Heidelberg. Stick your head in the monkey's head and you will become the monkey yourself. The bridge is a particularly photogenic place, especially at sunset. I almost dare to say that the sunset seen from the bridge can compete with a sunset on a tropical beach. Definitely take a picture. However, if you want the bridge to yourself, it is advisable to be very early. The light at the start of the day is very beautiful, and the crowds are still sleeping in one of the many hotels in the city. On the other side of the bridge, you will find the so-called love stone, where many couples have put a padlock to seal their love for eternity. Number 6. A visit to Heidelberg is not complete without a visit to the top of the 570-meter high mountain, called, Der Konigstall. It is easily accessible from the Altstadt in three ways. The easiest way is the Bergbahn. This is a funicular that departs from the station in the middle of the old town at the Kormarkt and makes a stop at the castle, with Hotel Mokenkor as the final station. From there, after a switch to the oldest electric mountain railway, it goes up to the mountain station, just below the top of the Koningstall. The ride is quite an experience, and the view from the slanting train on the rails is unique both to the front and to the back. A second method and a bit more tiring is a walk on one of the many paths that run over this mountain. Walk up gradually through the beautiful woods and enjoy the surroundings. On the way up, you sometimes can see the train through the woods. You should also watch out for the downhill bikers, who have a marked trail that occasionally crosses the hiking trail. On the other side of the mountain you can hike along the ocean of stones. This gives some surrealistic views, especially when you are alone and the weather is a bit moist. If you like a more sporty challenge, there is a third method. This one is called the Stairway to Heaven, or Die Himmelsleiter, in good German. This is a stair that has about 1,600 steps from the Altstadt. The stair was built in 1844 and completely renovated in 1994. Think carefully about this before you start. The stairs to the second floor of the Eiffel Tower have about 670 steps, so the stairs to heaven is almost 2.5 times as many, I recommend you be in good shape before you start this challenge. It is quite an experience to climb a stair when you can't see where it ends. By the way, I forgot that the bicycle or the car is also an option. Whichever method you will choose to go up, the view from the top is phenomenal. You can see a large part of Heidelberg and overlook the Neckar and the Rhine Valley. At the top you find a number of radio masts. Also you will find Hotel, Bergesthuf Konigstall, which has recently been completely renovated. The hotel offers tranquility, a great environment for conferences and great views over the city. Just grabbing a terrace in the Altstadt in the evening is a bit more cumbersome when staying here, but a moan who cares about this. By the way, don't forget to take a seat on the king's chair that is on top of the mountain. Number 7. 
If you have made it to the top with young kids, you can give them a big surprise. On top of the mountain is the fairy tale paradise, Mirchen Paradies, a unique amusement park for the little ones. If the roller coasters of the big amusement parks are just a step too far, the little ones will have a great time here. The park breathes the atmosphere of decades ago and can be called typically German, whatever that may be. There are a large number of attractions, including steerable boats, a steam train, bicycles, go-karts, bumper cars, pedal carts, playgrounds, etc. Keep in mind that you pay an entrance fee, but that you also have to pay for most individual electrical attractions, which means that a visit can be more expensive than initially thought. Alternatively, you can also walk around the park in the woods. Here you will also find some wooden statues and some playground equipment where the little ones can have fun. Enjoy! Number 8. In addition to hiking, the Heidelberg area is a paradise for cycling. Along the Neckar you can enjoy touring with your normal bicycle, and in the Rhine Valley you hardly have to be afraid of hills. If this is too tame for you, there are a number of trails in the mountains around Heidelberg to test your downhill skills, with the best trail starting from the Königstall. Be aware that you have to pay a fee here. If you like action, but not too extreme, mountain biking is a good alternative. The area has numerous trails of different levels. Most of them go either south, in the Koningstall area, or north in the Odenwald. In both areas, you mostly bike on wide forest paths, which are not too difficult to master. However, you can occasionally take a milder downhill trail to make your ride a little more spectacular. Be careful not to ruin your expensive, cross-country bike. Most trails require a good condition or an e-bike, because the hills around Heidelberg are steep. Keep in mind that there are almost no restaurants or water points along the way, so make sure you have your own provisions. Close to the Neckar you always have beautiful views, but if you go further into the Odenwald, you are surrounded by forest. The latter may not be that spectacular, but the tranquility is great. In a number of places you will come across sites such as castles or towers that are worth the trip in themselves, whether by bike or by foot. One of the best stops during a bike ride is the Telchik Term. This is a 41-meter high observation tower, that stands on top of the 530-meter-high Schriesheimer Kopf. The tower is named after the designer Robert Teltschik. The tower was built in 2001, is made of Larix wood and weighs 44 tons. As it is anchored in 65 cubic meters of concrete you will be safe when climbing it. The viewing platform is at 36 meters height and you can reach it over 192 steps. After climbing the mountain by bike, you can feel every individual step in your legs. On top of the oak platform, the view is overwhelming. You can see the Koenigstall, but Heidelberg is unfortunately just behind the hills. Instead, you will be rewarded with views over the entire Odenwald, with several transmission towers and the highest peaks of the area. If the weather is very good, you can even see Feldberg, the highest mountain in the Black Forest. The towns you see are Wilhelmsfeld close to the tower and Mannheim in the distance. If the wind blows hard, you must have nerves of steel because you can clearly feel the tower move under the influence of the wind. This is safe, but anything but pleasant with a fear of heights. The field at the foot of the tower is ideal for a picnic on warm days. At this altitude it is still a few degrees cooler than in the city. Number 9. One of the main reasons for many people to travel to this city is the Altstadt. 
This part of Heidelberg is the historic heart of the city and is full of cobbled streets, alleys, historic houses and stairs. Heidelberg is an old city and its history can be traced back to the 5th century AD. At this time only the name, Bergheim, was known, which is now located in the middle of the city. The name Heidelberg dates back to the 12th century. The oldest remains of the old town probably also date from this period. In any case, the castle dates from the 12th century and the famous university was founded in 1386. In addition, there are several churches that contribute to the character of this area. Most of those churches can be visited from the inside and they all have their own character. The most notable and largest church is the Holy Ghost Church on Heidelberger Marktplatz, which dominates the Altstadt. It gets its red color from the red sandstone, which is typical of the region. The church was built between 1398 and 1515 and has a rich history, in which it was even split into a Catholic and Protestant part for some time by means of a dividing wall. Close to this church, on the market, you will find plenty of terraces when the weather is warm. The term, cozy, seems to have been invented here. The atmosphere is great, but the 400 shops invite to walk back into the main street. Please do not forget to turn into one of the side streets. Here you can enjoy this historical heritage, a few meters away from the large tourist crowds. Number 10. If you are on the road, either by bike or on a long hike, you for sure will find ancient buildings or ruins on your way. A beautiful example is the ruined Schoenberg in Dossenheim. It is an idyllic place and ideal to relax in good weather while you use one of the old stone walls as a sofa. The former castle dates from the first half of the 12th century. Not only the ruin itself is worth visiting, but also the location is stunning. This castle is built on a cliff against the final slopes before the Rhine Valley. In 1460 the castle was besieged and destroyed and has not been used for its original purpose since. From this spot you have a wonderful view over the Rhine Valley. It is no punishment to stay here for a while before returning to Heidelberg. Sit down and watch all the beauty around you. Number 11. Last but not least. Let's not forget Heidelberg's main landmark, the castle. Wherever you are in and around the city, you cannot miss the castle. When you enter Heidelberg, the castle attracts you like a magnet and it is easy to believe that a large part of the 13.9 million people who visit the city every year actually do so to see the castle. This imposing red sandstone edifice is always shining impressively on the slopes above the city. The earliest construction of the castle was built before 1214 and it has suffered extensive destruction, fires and reconstructions. In addition, it had just as many powerful inhabitants. In the 18th century the castle was struck by lightning which caused a fire. This has resulted in the castle becoming the ruin it still is today. Fortunately, this does not take away the charm of the castle and its surroundings. 
You can visit the castle and it is very nice to walk through the gate at the bottom of the square tower into the courtyard and view the castle from the inside. It is just as impressive to walk around the castle and discover its true size. However, the best view is from a slope, from the philosopher's way, or from the air. You can see very well how the upper rooms no longer have a roof and why this imposing castle is actually a ruin. The castle gardens are also very beautiful. Not so much because they are beautifully laid out like some French palaces, but because of the lively crowds at the weekend and the magnificent views of the castle and the city of Heidelberg. Sit back, enjoy everything around you and wait for the sunset, which will emerge the city in a sea of lights. This is going to be amongst the most beautiful sunsets you have ever experienced. You too, will lose your heart in Heidelberg.